So, in my last video, I talked about the unbelievably strong institutional endorsement the Chainlink project has, with the world's most noteworthy names in finance giving the team and its services a standing ovation. Along with Eric Schmidt pretty much leaving Google and focusing his efforts in the most relevant project in the constantly evolving space of the web, but XRP to the moon, right? Yeah. Let's take things from the top. We know that Chainlink services are incredibly valuable to institutional money. Why? You'd think that if this project was as big and important as it's being made out to be, there'd be more buzz around Chainlink and not Dogecoin. Well, don't worry, we're gonna put on our thinking hats and dig into the nitty gritty details, stretching from the beginning of cryptocurrency to the emergence of the Oracle problem. Well, uh, the beginning of cryptocurrency. Starting from the humble birth of Bitcoin and the Bitcoin forums back in 2008, we see Bitcoin slowly rise to prominence over the years through what can be broken down into a few distinct factors. Bitcoin was the world's first introduction to what's known as blockchain technology, a mystical piece of sci-fi infrastructure that enables a future of flying cars, levitating cities, and... Well, not really. Blockchain is a digital ledger that records a series of transactions in sequential order. So, what is it exactly that makes what's essentially digital record keeping so valuable and important, especially as it's relevant to Chainlink? Well, in our current state of things, we're beginning to witness the decoupling of blockchain as it's relevant to cryptocurrency, and instead turning our eyes to the more ubiquitous term Web3. But how did this happen? What does this mean? Well, let's jump back to clearly stating what makes blockchain tech so attractive. What makes this digital ledger so interesting is its immutability, its inability to falsify records. Save for an overly technical explanation of how this works, basically, a blockchain is a decentralized network powered by individuals, a macrocosm maintained by the willing participation of those that resonate in a type of microcosmic orbit. To put that in layman's terms, basically, if people believe in the value or potential success of the Bitcoin network, or any other network powered by blockchain technology, Stunks. everyone donates a slice of their computing power and contributes energy towards a healthy, functioning blockchain network. Again, without getting into the technical side of things, you can understand this distributed donation of computational energy as mining. A mining. Network rewards those who give energy to it in the form of tokenized rewards. With this concentrated focus of computational energy and tokenized compensation being handed out to its creators, we again find ourselves at the birth of blockchain technology. Bitcoin. An immutable, decentralized ledger, which can be publicly accessed to show... What? Bitcoin's blockchain just shows a definitive record of wallet address X, sending amount of Bitcoin Y, to wallet address Z, ad infinitum. Bitcoin's immense value is wholly psychological phenomena, albeit built atop technology that many find a sense of liberation in. But there's a million Bitcoins now, all with their own unique blockchain. We have Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Shiba Coin, and Ethereum? Why do we see such a strong number two in what's comparatively a sea of vaporware, empty promises, and broken dreams? Well, thanks to Ethereum, crypto has moved on from its awkward teenage years of cryptocurrency and is fully embracing manhood as the accurately titled Web3. The unstoppable force of evolution poking and prodding at the internet has finally gave way, moving into a new era of digital gravity, signified by the intelligent network forming between tokenized assets, or rather, the layer of communication between different blockchains. So Aslef, when are those Chainlink tokens you told me to buy gonna go up in price? Well, don't worry friends, I have a flight booked to a rural village in Argentina tomorrow morning. 
No, but seriously, the state of things as they are now has been cooking for a long time, and it's never been this exciting. With ChatGPT4 displaying theory of mind, and AI art making my job easier, we return our focus to that strong number two, Ethereum. Ethereum takes the same concept of blockchain, the tokenization, the decentralization, the ledger, and adds the ability to store a program within this focus of computational energy. This program sitting atop this community focused creation of computational energy is called a smart contract. Basically, you're creating a program in the cloud that is the internet, which automatically activates when certain conditions are met. This is a continuation of a huge idea present in Web3. The notion that everyone with a computer connecting to the soon-to-be serverless internet is a participant powering the decentralized Web3, instead of the current standard of connecting to huge arrays of centralized servers. But didn't we just have a whole thing about how blockchains are only considered valuable technology because of their immutability? No one cares about your decentralized ledger if a gust of wind carries away whatever exactly it was that you were trying to scribble in the sand. So if a smart contract only runs when certain conditions are met, and the core strength of blockchain technology is its immutability, its eternal, unchanging record of events, then how is a smart contract, a program running on the Ethereum network, supposed to know when to activate and run a program? This is what's known as the Oracle problem. Blockchain technology is valuable because of its immutability, but it's that same immutability which creates a blockage in a smart contract's potential to reliably activate any one specific program whenever that program is desired to run. Without being able to trust the inputs which would otherwise be intelligently programmed to a variable output capable of automating like 50% of society, Smart contracts remain practically incapable of performing all the work on this really long chart I don't fully understand, and more. As you can imagine, the potential of smart contracts is unleashed with a working Oracle solution. Smart contracts aren't going to function without reliable inputs, and a faulty Oracle can be devastating. Let's take a look at one of the biggest crypto exploits so far this year. On February 1st, 2023, Bank DAO, a decentralized liquidity protocol for self-sovereign finance, lending with a collateralized payment token, suffered one Oracle exploit that cost its users nearly $120 million. So let's break this down so that's a bit easier for the layman to understand. If a smart contract is programmed to sell X amount of Bitcoin whenever its price reaches a certain threshold, the smart contract knows when to activate based on an oracle updating a data feed, which tells the smart contract what the price of Bitcoin is. So now that the smart contract knows the price of Bitcoin thanks to the oracle input, it can either sell or not sell the Bitcoin. And if you know anything about programming, you understand that programs do exactly as they're told. So if a hacker manages to exploit a smart contract's oracle solution, and the smart contract isn't programmed with these kind of edge cases in mind, there go your millions of dollars, repeatedly activating until every last cent is drained out of whatever funds your smart contract was working with. Now that we've highlighted the importance of a secure working Oracle solution and have addressed the fact that smart contracts aren't good for much without this aforementioned secure working Oracle solution, let's get to the meat and potatoes here and continue where we left off with the last video. My Psychosis, Chainlink's insane institutional endorsement, and the network effect. Having really gotten into crypto in late 2017, I've begun to understand that my perspectives on the Web3 space are a bit more seasoned than I would expect to anticipate. Watching the great Bitcoin moon of January 2018, I was obviously enthralled and quickly disillusioned with the cruel winters that crypto markets seemed to summon. But during the cold, hard, and brutal winter, I watched something miraculous happen. Despite the blood in the streets, despite the first wave of the so-called altcoins starving and their thousands of corpses fertilizing the soil for the next bull cycle, Chainlink went up 500% against the price of Bitcoin. And no one cared. Because like a stoplight, no one cares about crypto except when it's green. To me, discerning Chainlink out of the sea of altcoins in 2017 felt like Indiana Jones picking up the Holy Grail. 
To the average investor, there is such a massive wall of technobabble, history, and confusion between understanding exactly what it is that you're investing in, which makes Chainlink fly under the radar for all except the most savvy of mean lords. In the cacophony of our modern day dot com boom, the importance of smart contracts, their value capture, and the thus necessitated need for a working Oracle solution is now extremely obvious. We'll save discussing precisely how useful smart contracts are for future Web3 content. For now, just understand that it's a new layer of innovation, which saves corporations a lot of money. And if you're not adapting, we'll see the same story of Sears, too big to fail, later going bankrupt because they were confident that the internet was just a passing fad. So there it is, a brief history of how we got here. The birth of blockchain, the emergence of smart contract networks, and the thus necessitated need for a working Oracle solution. So let's do a quick recap of what we've covered so far before we explain this so-called network effect. Number one, blockchains are eternal, unchangeable records of whatever it is that's encoded into them, whether it be the entire transaction history of the Bitcoin network or Ethereum's programmable smart contracts. Number two, smart contracts automate business, finance, and commerce, all while simultaneously being more cost-effective, secure, and transparent. Those who don't adapt will simply fall behind. Number three, smart contracts rely on the immutability of blockchain tech, which then creates the issue of smart contracts not having access to secure, reliable inputs. This is known as the Oracle problem. We could talk about the network effect for hours, but instead, let's keep it simple. Let's define the network effect as a phenomena where an increased number of participants in a system increases the value or utility of the underlying network and the service it underpins. Basically, the more creative energy and work done with the Chainlink network and its many services increases the value of the network, which increases the value of the token price. Only thing is, Chainlink is not allowed to say this last part. Why? Well, it's because of none other than Gary Gensler, power tripping over at the SEC. Chainlink, as a corporation, has never once said anything about the price of their token because of the fear that this will mark their token as an unregistered security by the SEC. This is why Chainlink is so wildly set apart from crypto, and comparing the waves of vaporware and Ponzi coins to one of the greatest developments of the computer architecture in the 21st century is a sin only known to too small of an intellectual minority. Chainlink's utility, potential for growth, and insane relevancy to institutional money, as it's relative to the network effect, means big things for your investment portfolio as a low-balled $487 trillion is practically set in stone to spark the growth of the network, ushering in a new era of finance and commerce. So again, we have an investment that is basically the closest thing you can get to a guaranteed moonshot, still kicking around at sub $10. The now public, glowing endorsement of SWIFT and other legacy banking infrastructure partnered with strategic guidance from the man that practically pioneered the all-too-prosperous era of Web2. All of this shadowed by BlackRock, the largest asset manager on the planet, hinting at their vision of finance evolving into a world of tokenized assets and the systems that govern them. Yeah, the Chainlink network effect is a snowball rolling down Mount Everest, and not enough people realize that it's both the safest and most lucrative investment in the entire sphere of crypto investing. Hopefully after this video, you can see why. Well, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment about what you found interesting or would like to see mentioned in future Web3 content. If you'd like to stack some cubes in the meantime, Coinbase is widely considered the best on-ramp for fiat to crypto transactions, meaning if you want to invest in some Chainlink tokens, download the Coinbase app or visit the website and get started. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.
Yes. Bumpy. Bumpy.